Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, and thanks for joining us here at Think Tech today with Adventures in Small Business. I'm Jane Sawyer. I'm the District Director for the U.S. Small Business Administration here in Hawaii. And we're happy to welcome um, small business owners and other guests to talk about opportunities for small businesses and exactly that, what adventures they have had in their experience in entrepreneurship and business ownership. We've just come off National Small Business Week. Here in Hawaii, we recognize about 29 small business owners, entrepreneurs, exporters, and just to, to hear their inspiring stories, see what their accomplishments are, and also their contributions to the community. Today, I'm pleased to welcome our exporter for the city and county of Honolulu, Brian Weiland of Wise Gallery. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about how he got his business started, what motivated him, and where he plans to take this great little business that's located in Haleiwa. Welcome to the program. How are you today, Brian? Good. Thanks, Jane. Good. Good. Glad to have you. Um, I know there's a great story behind your business. Um, you've really built it into kind of a powerhouse and a destination spot up in Haleiwa, too. How did you get started in the art gallery business? Um, you know, it's it's a it's always been a challenge to do a, to do a, my first like real you know small business, and um, I I really have to give it to my family has been doing art galleries for um, mm -hmm. you know the past thirty years at least since I was born, and um, my uh, my my father started our first store in Haleiwa um, back in eighty seven when I was born, and um, I kind of ended up you know growing up in the gallery literally there all the time with my dad, um, and I started working there when I was fourteen in the gift store. Oh. with a worker's permit uh -huh. and um, yeah I guess I was kind of like Pinocchio in the gallery and just kind of <laughs> kind of grew up in there and mm -hmm. um, the, when I got a little older and you know I got got out of school and um, I really wanted to have my own business and uh, I guess the art gallery was I had all my I had all the info I knew what I needed to do um, I have a kind of a different um, take on what I had to do I want uh, the artists have changed um, the printings changed a lot of technologies changed in the art galleries mm -hmm. so I just kind of wanted to Kind of take the, the information and the knowledge that I've got growing up with it, and um, mm -hmm. kind of recreate it into a new. So it's almost brand. like this is this is a family. It's a family business. Family it's in deal. your blood. It's something yep. that that you know very very well. But you also have kind of put your own brand on it, put your own spin on it. And I think one of the first things is when you first started and kind of took off with a few artists, you weren't actually in a brick and mortar structure. Yeah, so I actually um, started off as a website. Um, I was selling iPhone cases and um, just kind of, you know, anything I could sell was really small items. I literally was, we weren't really making any money doing that, but um, mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to open a space at Aloha Tower Marketplace because mm -hmm. um, they were going through a transformation um, with ownership there and um, they had some spaces open and I, I went in there, I started Extremely Minimal. There was an art gallery that had closed down in there okay. in the past and I had taken over the space. It was um, kind of like the carpets were stained, the walls were kind of dirty, and it was just, it was kind of a rundown space, but um, mm -hmm. it was like perfect for me to get going because I could start at a small enough place where I felt comfortable. Um, I didn't have any employees. I literally just drove out there every day from North Shore to, um, to work that gallery and um, kind of quit all my other jobs that I was doing. And it just, it kind of just snowballed and started turning into a little bit more, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of added a couple more artists. I maybe had about five artists during that time. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, just was kind it of, a very big space then at it that was, time? It wasn't a it wasn't a very small space. I'd say it was maybe around like a thousand twelve hundred square feet okay. somewhere in that range. Um, my new store is twenty five hundred square feet now. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were in Aloha Tower Marketplace um, several years ago. When did you make the move so to? I Haleiwa? made the move to Haleiwa in 2014. So okay. that's when I um, basically you know started up my new my new store, which is my my uh, my baby. It's basically like I completely custom got, I got the custom build that store. I made it 100 percent to a, a certain way that I wanted to have it to mm -hmm. look like its own piece of art. Mm -hmm. And I think you've accomplished that from the pictures I've seen. I can't wait to have the chance to come out yeah, and actually visit. Yeah, excited to have you And to help with that transition, too, you you knew you wanted to go to Haleiwa. You knew you wanted to represent Hawaii art. 
uh, and you knew that the tourist market would be there as well. So with those things in mind, did you have to look for a long time for location, or how did that all come together? The weirdest thing about, about business that I've noticed, at least in my experience, is just how think, if you really, really want something to happen and you keep thinking about it in your head and you keep visualizing it, and um, I feel like things start to happen and you get weird opportunities that just kind of show up. And the same way that I got my website was a weird opportunity that my, my dad had a friend that um, could build a, a website for me, and he it was kind of a trade for something else that they had in the past, and um, that got me that. And then okay. Aloha Tower also came from my dad, basically mm -hmm. having, um, you know, he had a little office space in there, and then he okay. he was able to get me a, a little space to build a gallery. Mm -hmm. And then um, the landlord from Mahaliva Space approached my dad to ask if he wanted to open a gallery. My dad was, you know, he's kind of been retired from galleries for a little okay. while, and offered me the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I saw the space, and I knew the space where it was, and I just thought it was totally perfect. I started looking in the windows there on my way home from work. <laughs> I started trying to envision what I was going to try uh -huh. and build in there. I knew I wanted to make it kind of like a rainforest, so uh -huh. I could see these big trees going in there. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, kind of like w everything that it was envisioned about that store just kind of came to be. So having a, an idea or vision of where you want to go, recognizing opportunity, and also having some good connections to help put you in the right place made a big difference for you. And you you mentioned your Holly Eva space in the store. I know it was a real... Um, project to get it built out and everything. So tell us a little bit about what you did there because I think that is one of the things that is so unique about it. It's look, the number of artists and things like that, but the physical plant that you developed and designed because you develop you designed it all yourself, didn't you? Yeah. So I had a big a big a big part of designing the store. Um, I had all these things that I wanted to have in the store. Um, my dad's already built a lot of galleries, so he really helped me with kind of the functionality of viewing rooms and a, a couple mm -hmm. like little necessities that you have to have in a gallery. That my dad has you know a lot of insight with that. I also had a really amazing professional designer to kind of help all the ideas that we had become a reality in there and okay. make it actually work into the space. Because it does look like it's an outdoor environment. There's beautiful wood everywhere, and a lot of a lot of wood artists. Uh, and yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm basically I'm a Mother Nature um, fanatic. I love everything about the outdoors, and um, I wanted my store to kind of have like a feeling of um, all the earthy elements. You got the the, the wood in there, the trees, the um, the, the slab stairs. Uh, we have stone in there. We have kind of like um, you know uh, rustic metals and steel. Mm -hmm and glass. It's kind of just all of Mother Nature's elements mm -hmm. uh, all in, inside the space. Okay, good. It's, it sounds fabulous. What are your biggest sellers? Um, um, I mean, we, we sell a little bit of everything. Um, mm -hmm. I've noticed um, photography has been a huge um, you know, item for us nowadays. I know my, when my family was doing galleries back in the day, the printing technology was um, you know, really behind. You couldn't do nearly as much with um, any rep representation or presentation of the art. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, with the way printing is and all the technology, we can um, photography has become you know a, a huge seller huge. for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a huge variety of original paintings, um, different kind of prints. We have uh, glass art, wood sculpture, um, mm -hmm. bronze sculpture. Uh -huh. We kind of bring everything under the sun in there. Anything we can find in the art world. Do you do you seek out artists, or do artists now seek you out? Um, I get seeked out a lot for artists, but I also seek out artists. It's kind of um, I just let um, the world kind of bring everything together. I really uh -huh. try and stand out of the way of um, things happening. But like you said about opportunity, I kind of always look for opportunity, and I mm -hmm. think if there's an opportunity there, I try my best to notice it and to mm -hmm. and you know. To mm -hmm. encourage it to, to flow through the gallery. Yeah, and so from the uh, from jumping kind of from the art side to maybe the business side a little bit, um, some people may think you have a store in Holly Eva. You're selling art, kind of an ambassador of Hawaii because you're selling things that are definitely related to our environment and local artists and things. But we call you an exporter, and that's because well, how much how much would you say you do export? Your customers are. So I, I'm really proud to say too that I do have a lot of local customers, which I love about the Hollywood. It's not a, it's not considered a touristy town, but there is a lot of tourists there. Um, mm -hmm. I cater to you know a lot of military, um, a lot of locals throughout the island, but we also we do export about 60 percent of our our sales are you know exported out of Hawaii, and we mm -hmm. kind of help people all over the world. They come to Hawaii, um, they find something really really special for them to bring back um, mm -hmm. for, to remember their trip forever. You just even have a good feeling uh -huh. when they're at home. Um, and these these collectors buy art all over the world, and mm -hmm. I'm really proud to be able to. You know, support our local artists to you know get their their work clear across so the entire Australians, world. Australians, Japanese, everywhere. Chinese, everywhere yeah. it comes in, and yep. and so and also to take advantage of that and facilitate that, you 
provide the right kind of customer service. Was that a challenge to get to that spot? The or? customer service is huge, and I gotta say, like the biggest thing in the whole entire like deal that makes this thing work is my office manager is amazing. Um, I had, <laughs> I needed to find her to do this store. Um, her, um, she has been with me the whole way through, and she packs, she ships, she ships everything, um, tracking numbers go out. Um, she looks after all of our customers for us. Um, I have an amazing uh, team in there. Basically, mm -hmm. is what it comes down to, and I think any business owner, like in the whole, at the only, the main thing that they will tell um, every single person that asks them is that their team is what did it for them. Um, mm -hmm. It really has a small part to do with like what we do, you know, uh -huh. as the business. How owner. many employees do you have? I only have Ryan. four employees right now. Mm -hmm. um, I have an office manager, and I have three um, our consultants that work uh -huh. on the sales floor. Um, we have a really special team right now. I'm really proud of the whole mm -hmm. setup that we have, and it took four years to get to this kind of. Uh, you know, environment that we have and the, the people that we have there. Mm -hmm. Do they have to go through special training? Or, I mean... Um, you know, in, in with, with art sales, it's really about helping the customer get the right information for to make a good buying decision. Um, I think that it's a lot of self-taught. Um, the, the art consultants really just have to have a genuine uh, interest in helping the customer find mm -hmm. out exactly what they're looking for. Uh -huh. um, no one will ever buy a piece of art unless they're in love with it. That's kind of, it's, it's a luxury yeah. item. You know, it's one of those things that you can only buy it out of pure, um, you know, excitement that it does something for you inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they are, they're able to convey that and serve the customer, help them find what yep. they want, and that's the, that's the, the top qualities for those Exactly. Those Make sure that they people. walk out of the store with a, with a really um, good experience and that they hopefully got a really cool piece of art and that the art consultant you know, did, got it, all the info uh -huh. they needed for them, uh, made sure that it's going to get to the right place, uh, make sure that they follow up and let them know about new products that are coming out that might be of their interest. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you've got a tremendous inventory, lots of types of artwork, and that would mean a lot of artists. So those are a lot of moving pieces, a lot to manage. Yes. Um, is that unusual? Um, it, it's it's unusual, but um, at the same time, it's everyone kind of pulls their own weight. Um, mm -hmm. The artists are just as involved as we are. They want to make mm -hmm. sure that our gallery is stocked. If they're in the store, they want to make sure that everything's there for um, for us to make the sales and to help their you know help promote their artwork. And um, it's kind of a it's a huge team effort. Really, everyone kind of does their own part, and it, mm -hmm. you know it wouldn't work if if everyone wasn't you know pitching in to make it happen. And you have how many artists are are represented in your gallery? I'm featuring over uh, 30 different artists. Um, uh -huh. I have about 90 98 percent of them are local artists. I have a couple that are where for my local customers that kind of want to shop for something a little different. And, um, you know, the, I basically um, have one of each kind of artist. I don't feature two artists that do the same type of work. So oh. every single artist brings their own unique style to the gallery. Mm -hmm. That sounds really very, very interesting and, and seems like keeping a lot of, you know, balls in the air and juggling. Absolutely. You know? yep. So, well, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break. We're going to come back. And because it sounds like there's so, so many pieces to manage, as I said, that I'm interested, too, in how you brought it all together to make it work and how it works financially. So we'll be back and tell you, talk a little bit more about how, how this great gallery on the North Shore got moving and um, how to go up and, and visit Wise Gallery. for coming back uh, to talk with us a bit more. We're here with Brian Weiland from Wise Gallery and Holly Eva. And we've been talking about how he got the business started. Really young man with a lot of energy um, and really building 
a gallery that has his special brand, his energy, his love of nature, the beauty of Hawaii, and connecting us, well, almost an ambassador to the world. So this was an ambitious project when you expanded from a hot tower marketplace. How did you manage to put all that together, Brian? Um, it was absolutely a whole different world. I mean, uh, I used very minimal funds to start Aloha Tower Gallery as a very, very just kind of get it started, um, uh -huh. very minimal. Um, this new gallery took, you know, it took a massive amount of investment. Um, I had, you know, I want to mention that, you know, I I basically was, I uh, had to write a business plan, of course, and uh -huh. um, that was a challenge in itself, and I had to make sure all the numbers had worked you, out. Had you done that ever before? I have never written a business plan, so that was my first one. And <laughs> okay. um, it took me a good probably three months to do it, um, uh -huh. to get everything down there. Um, I kind of got the help from my family, uh, mm -hmm. help from different people that I knew would, you know, be um, important for it. And um, I just started going to the banks and um, dropping off my business plan and trying to get a meeting with them. And um, mm -hmm. I have to say that First Hawaiian Bank was um, in Chinatown was the one that you know, came to meet me. Uh -huh. I, I rode down there on my skateboard, 26-year-old kid <laughs> riding down on my skateboard with a business plan. Uh -huh. um, we dropped it off over there, and um, the manager of the bank came to my store and met me, and he was interested to hear my vision. And um, it, we just we kind of went from there, and it, um, they, I ended up getting the funding um, through First Hawaiian Bank to start my store. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a, you know, I have a, a one of my loans is backed by the Small Business Administration, and mm -hmm. um, without their help, I would have never been able to do a store like this because it took them. I mean, this is a, a serious investment to do mm -hmm. the kind of build out we did in there. It took eight months to build a store, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it, the pressure was on. Once that happened, I, it, everything became really real. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. You put it, it on paper, you get the funding, and it's yep. like, okay, now we've got to execute. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh huh. But that it's gone very well. You're. It sounds like you were a little surprised. A few, a few rejections at first, but then you found somebody who could believe in your vision and your dream as well. But uh, you also, in putting together your business plan, you said you had to make sure that the numbers worked as well. So. Um, did you work with a CPA or an accountant, or was it just getting into the spreadsheets and digging in yourself? I actually, um, I'll, I'll say one com one thing that really helped me was um, this co this um, website called Enloop, um, mm -hmm. E N L O O P dot com. Um, uh -huh. They do great uh, business plan formulas. It really helps you structure it if you don't know, know exactly how to professionally write a business plan. Um, mm -hmm. It's more about inputting the data in there. Um, I also went to do counseling with the SBA. Um, oh, okay. To, I wanted to learn kind of you know what are the bankers looking for. Um, what are the main parts that I would need to focus on? Kind of, you know, where where should I really put my energy into to write this plan properly? That was mm -hmm. that was actually really helpful. I, I you know, mm -hmm. I advise that people go and talk to you know the Small Business Administration to get that kind of info. There's a lot of details that you would go right over your head if you didn't you know have that kind of counseling session. Yeah. Sometimes it's tough if uh, you know a lot of people don't like to hear that reality check, but in the end, it's a very very important thing. Um, we do have a lot of uh, opportunities for people to come in and talk to SBA. We actually have a couple of activities coming up. We call them Small Business Resource Days, and we participate with all of our lenders here in Hawaii. Um, we have a resource day coming up on May 24th, Friday, May 24th. This, this will give you an opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with an SBA specialist who can talk to you about the SBA lending programs, writing your business plan, where else you can go to find assistance. They're free, confidential, one-on-one -on -one discussions, and it just gets you started a little bit faster down that path. So that May 24th activity is with Hawaii National Bank in Kailua, so on the windward side. We also have a resource day coming up on July 27th, so that's a lot of lead time if you have to do some planning or pull together some numbers in advance. That will be with American Savings Bank in Makiki. You can go to sba.gov backslash HI Hawaii and find out more information about these training sessions, where to find our, our specialists or other consulting resource partners. But if it's what puts you on the path to the money you need to help you realize your dream, or it sounds like you've gotten a good start on that dream, it's going really, really well. You mentioned that you know your term loan is almost you know, finished and you're, you're ready to look at what's the next step. So what are you envisioning, Brian, is, you know, where else would you want to go or what, what's? The... Um, basically, um, well, uh, you know, my dad, when he did the stores, he built a lot of stores. He's in the doing, you know, huge volume um, as far as like the stores and um, output that he's doing. I, I, my gallery put a lot, I put so much into building the gallery like a big piece of art that I will probably do much less stores. I would love to do um, a Waikiki store um, one mm -hmm. day soon to help my customers in town. 
and uh, possibly one in another island, but I think I'm going to keep my business pretty small because I love mm -hmm. to get off of work, watch the sunset every day with my dog, mm -hmm. or go running in the trails in the mountains. And um, I, I, can't, I just want to make sure that it, there's always a good balance of work and you mm -hmm. know living your life because that's really the whole reason why we're why we're here. I feel yeah. so. Yeah, I think that's that probably says it all right there. Is you know work hard, you dream big, and and you, it's all about quality of life. Exactly. So, but so maybe an expansion to to Waikiki, maybe a neighbor island. Would you look at adding more artists or bringing in more creative artists? Kind of one of the biggest things about doing a new store is being able to have more artists too. I know I do compete with galleries that have many more um, many more stores than I do, and mm -hmm. um, it's very it's it gets a little hard to get the you know exclusivity with a certain artist that mm -hmm. um, has the opportunity to be in multiple galleries. So even though we're a really awesome gallery, uh, I uh -huh. still face that challenge. So being able to do more stores will help me to kind of get a couple more of the artists that I'd really like to, you mm -hmm. know, have featured in my gallery. Mm -hmm. So there's still still room for growth, you think, and still creative areas to move into. But you've built this business pretty quickly, and you're ramping up the annual revenues. You've broken the million-dollar mark already, which is quite an accomplishment for a very young business. Um, it's been very exciting. You know, so, and so another outlet would help you expand that a little bit further as well, huh? Yes. You know. it just, it'd be a fun. It'd just be fun. It'd be more fun to have more than one store, get a little more action in the business side, and um, it'd be a lot more challenging though. Mm -hmm. Probably going to have a couple more gray hairs after mm -hmm. that one yeah. too. Uh, <laughs> those come along pretty easily. Got my first one at my first store. <laughs> at the first store. So yeah, but um, along with some of the the new ideas that. Uh, um, I'm just thinking about attracting more exporters or the tourism market. Are, how do you reach these people? I think, you know, your brand is pretty well recognized, but a lot of people who come here need to still find you. How do you advertise and reach out in those areas? Uh, I advertise on several um, several channels. You know, I use a little bit of print. Um, I try to do the Facebook and social media advertising. Um, mm -hmm. I do a little promote. I, we do Art Walk every um, second Saturday of the month. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually have this Saturday. It's a really, really fun one um, from 12 to 6. We have live music. Um, an artist from Big Island flying in to, to be there. Oh. And um, yeah, basically, you know, um, really word of mouth is one, one way that gets us through. And we're just in a really, really heavy uh, trafficked area. Haleiwa is a crazy booming town every single day. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like it that it's this mystery gallery that you have no idea there's a space like that in Haleiwa. You come walking down the town and you just see this crazy looking space with big 13 foot trees in there mm -hmm. and it just kind of draws you in and then mm -hmm. um, and then you tell your friends that you saw this like really crazy weird art gallery space that looked like its own piece of art you know uh -huh. and so, i think that's where i find a lot of them okay and you you said you deal with you know you deal with military families as well providing them something special from their stay in Absolutely. hawaii at least so um, and the advertising reaches them the tourism publications, and you mentioned Art Walk. You said it's a special one coming up. Tell us a little bit about Holly Eva Art Walk. So the Art Walk, um, we have several galleries in town. We, we all try and make Art Walk um, you know, something special for the people that are cruising around the town. Um, Holly Eva's been a little more challenging with Art, Lock, Art Walk the past few years. Um, the, me and the, the other galleries have been trying to get it moving again, but um, mm -hmm. it's been you know a steady steady growth in the, the amount of people coming out. It's hard to make it through all the traffic from town or wherever mm -hmm. you're coming from. That's kind of our biggest setback, but um, I, we try and bring a special artist in to hang out at the gallery to meet customers. We have live music, um, mm -hmm. we have, you know, drinks and poo-poos, and just kind of a, it's just a really fun time to come hang out, get to meet your favorite artists. Um, you might find a really special piece that day, you can mm -hmm. get a picture with them, uh, you uh -huh. can get a cool dedication on the back, and um, just kind of talk story, you know, there's always little perks to getting a piece of art when you're, you mm -hmm. know, standing with the artist. So it just kind of cranks it up a little bit, just a little adds bit. a little value yep. in, in making that experience so special. And if you don't find anything, then you at least got to hang out and have some drinks and cruise with the artists and just have a good time with mm -hmm. your family. It's a really cool family event to go to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I just recently, well, last August, my brother and his family came to town, and that was my first time to kind of, you know, with little the little kids, you got to move quickly. Exactly. So we, we went through very quickly. So I've been, as I said, introduced, but anxious to come back and spend a little more time in your gallery and see what's going on up there. You know. Awesome. So. Um, your experience with uh, winning your Exporter Award. Um, I think it came out of a, a little bit that special relationship with First Hawaiian Bank, and they wanted to acknowledge what you've accomplished as a young entrepreneur and a business owner. Um, you have anything to comment on that? 
Um, just thank you so much to First Hawaiian Bank. Um, the most personable people I've dealt with, you know, they're just been, they, every single person I've worked with in there has just been so cool and they've just been so, you know, real with me and um, it's really cool that they believed in me. Um, huge thank you to the SBA too for mm. putting that on. You guys go, do so such hard work to host these events and um, honor all these people and it's really important because um, people, you know, it really helps to be recognized for something good that you do and it's also good to let other people know that there's a, you know, there, that that can be a place for them too and there's um, there's so much opportunity out there in the world so much cool help from the banks, the mm -hmm. you know the government with the SBA and everything. There's just there's really a lot of opportunity if you want to do your own business. You absolutely can, but you have to make sure you're having fun. You have to make sure that um, <laughs> you, you keep your creativity. And um, uh -huh. yeah, basically, if you're not having fun, it's going to be a lot more difficult. And um, you need to just know that there is people out there that can help. Mm -hmm. And um, you start small, and it just kind of grows slowly, and you you never know where you're going to end up in mm -hmm. a few years. Well, you've been very very dedicated and and very involved with your business and how it's growing and shaping it. Um, were there bigger challenges or, you know, did you ever think, I don't want to be doing this? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you know, you, you're always going to feel like that. There's always mm -hmm. going to be those times where you feel like you're really, you're, uh, I feel like I'm, you know, insufficient enough to, to run a business like this. Sometimes I face a lot of hardships and, um, but then, you know, I go home at the end of the day and I think back on everything and I, um, it's so special to be able to kind of have your own business, especially in your own hometown. And um, it, you always have discouraging moments, but um, if you really, really love what you're doing and you pick a you know a business that you just feel comfortable about and you have this kind of energy for you, you're going to get through all the hard times. And um, I think every, everyone in the world faces challenges in anything they do, and it's just as challenging to work for somebody else as it is to run your own business in its own way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's much better to be able to be the decider, to exactly. be able to accept the responsibility and and make the decision, and then also make things happen in a big way. And it yep. sounds like, Brian, you've been able to, to really accomplish a lot, do that with, with a great vision, with a great idea, and a lot of energy and passion about what you do. So thank you so much for um, bringing all those special things and sharing the artists of Hawaii with so many more people. Um, it's great to have our exporter from the city and county of Honolulu here. Um, I encourage you all to get out to Wise Gallery and check it out whether it is on gallery walk day or art walk day in Haleiwa, or just a, a pleasant afternoon to, to go drop in and see something that can also inspire you. Uh, it's also Global Trade Month, so that means we need to look at those opportunities and check on all those other people who are helping us export and bring Hawaii to the rest of the world. Thanks for being here with us again today, and um, we wish you continued success, Brian. Thanks Thank you, so Jane. much. Thank you very much. Right. And